Very quiet. <laughs> hey, Leon, down to your right. How's it going? How's fight week so far? Uh, good, good. I've been here now for um, almost two weeks, so I've kind of got used to the uh, the Vegas time zones and just en enjoying fight week for what, it, for what it is, you know. Nice. And I guess, um, how's this one feel compared to the others? Any different considering who you're going against, the moment? Um, not really. I don't think I don't think it feels bigger than the, the first, the world, the fourth for, for the world title. I think that feels um, that was for me anyway. That that, that was more more pressure on me, you know. I think this one, uh, I'm already, I uh, solidify myself, like, in my, for the confidence that I can achieve what I've achieved, you know. So going, going out there, finding a guy in Cove Covington, um, a guy that I don't really like, I think it makes it easier in training camp, it makes it easier to show up and compete, you know. How do you balance that, right? Because on one hand, you're going against a guy that's kind of got the pro wrestling thing going on, but he's also, you know, we talked to him a few minutes ago, he was had all sorts of insults to hurl at you about being a quitter and asking us to ask you what your IQ was and all this stuff and <laughs> draped out in the Donald Trump suit. So how do you balance motivating yourself in a healthy way versus like playing into the, the pro wrestling game, so to speak? Um, easy to be fair, because I, I think everyone knows he's, he's playing like a character, right? And even him af after like when the was man, he's like, oh, I won't, I won't try and sell a fight, bro. You know what I mean? So it's like easier to, to take someone like that like, as a joke, you know, and that's, that, that's, what, that's what I'm able to do, just take it for what it is. Um, he's a clown and just treat, treat, treat him as such, you know. And separating uh, his personality and, and the gimmick from his abilities, I guess, what do you see now that you've gone through a training camp and, and really studied him? Um, that's not as good as everyone thinks, you know. Um, he's a guy that's been stopped before by TKO, been choked out before been taken down before you know so there's there's many ways that you can you can beat him there's many he's just a normal fighter that that's more scrappy basically he's like, he's like Uzbe, more, more scrappy basically you know and um me and my team has came up with a great game plan um to neutralize everywhere where he's good at and my aim is to go out there and take him out you know and i know when you won the or when you last fought in march um you were kind of lukewarm about him being the next challenge for you. You said that, you know, that wasn't going to be the case. Um, now that it's here, do you still feel like he's really shouldn't be the guy on the other side? Like if it was a, a just system or? Uh, do you? Do you think he should be the guy? I mean, it's, <laughs> exactly well, Paul right. certainly has a good case as well. Yeah, exactly. So I was in no one, I think no one in this room know why the final for Tau, but we're here now and none, none of that matters. You know, like I said, all it matters now is Saturday night going out there, taking him out. Um, I am focused fully on, on that, and that's it. Whether he deserves it or not, it doesn't matter because he's fine anyway for the, for the bout, and that's my aim. And I do, I do want to get your reaction. We got news uh, recently that Bilal is going to be weighing in as the backup. I know he's been asking for a rematch against you for a while. Um, do you feel like that was the, the right move, and do you feel like he's going to be the one that's next for you if you get through Colby? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, but there's many guys that's, that's – been the backup for other cars and didn't end up fighting for the for, for the world title, you know. And um, let's say on Saturday night, one of the, one of the other guys did like a mad stand up performance. Maybe you just skip them, skip Bilal and put them in, you know. So who knows? Um, but like I said, you got to fight them all anyway. So whoever comes first, it doesn't matter. Leon, you mentioned about Colby being a character and how in the past he said to Kamari like, "Oh, I'm selling the fight and stuff like that." If he turns around to you and says, "I was only joking about that." Do you sort of go, I get it, it's a character, or do you think, well, if you say those things, you're still saying those things, character or not? Um, I don't know, I don't know. I just don't think after we have a beer, like maybe in the octagon, as like um, athletes, like, oh yeah, like good fight, but um, I wouldn't be like going, going to the club with him after. We're just two different guys, you know, I feel like even without fighting, we just wouldn't be friends anyway. You know, I think his, his way of, his mentality is different from my mentality. His, his way of thinking is different from, from the way, my way of thinking. And um, that's it. You know, we're just two different human beings. And, um, but he, he sells a fight. I get paid. We all get paid. So here's what it is. So you mentioned that you don't, you, you dislike him. Do you, is that like a, I really, this guy personally, I really just, I can't stand him. I hate him. Or is it just like, this guy annoys me? No, I don't hate him. I don't know him like that to hate him. You know, uh, I, hate, I hate the character that he's playing. You know, I find it just strange that a grown ass man is walking around with another grown ass man in his clothes. You know, it's just a weird thing. Um, 
I don't get it because I'm from different like parts of the world from him. But if that's his thing, that's his thing, right? And um, yeah, fair play to him. Do you think just sort of, you know, he's had these title shots, he got this title shot that you're not sure he deserved. Do you think after this one, you'll kind of prove that his time at the top of the division is over and that he spent too long on the shelf? Um, I believe so. I believe so, you know. Um, I can't see him. Cause he's all turning on all the younger guys coming up. You know, he's turning on all... Everyone that you used to offer them and sit out for two years, you know, so now I can't see him winning the belt and then fighting all the young up-and-comers. I just can't see it happening, you know, and I think when someone like that gets stuffed and added to them so easily all the time that he feels like he can do that, you know, so um, after being, I, I, I truly believe he's either retire or move down, probably. He keep calling out with Islam, so let him go for Islam in a light way, you know. You uh, the Bilal rematch. Does that interest you, right? We saw it play out, and you know you were winning that fight before the eye poke and everything. So, does the rematch kind of interest you? Or in a way, do you almost feel like I've done that already? I'd rather fight other people. Um, I don't know. I'd like to fight, fight other people, probably. But like I said, if I have to fight Bilal, I fight Bilal. You know, like I've, I feel like I've proven that I'm way better than him anyway, just from that one round. And um. Well, yeah, if he's next, like I said, I, I, I'll, be, I'll, I'll happily um, engage in it and it's fine. You know, like, I believe that I'm going to fight them all anyway. So why not fight them all, all as, as a champion? You know, why not fight them all as the king and um, making money for it, making pay-per-views for it? Why not do it then? You know, so I'm going to fight them all anyway. So it doesn't matter who's next. And uh, you mentioned, just a quick one for me, he, you mentioned, uh, you know, his suit and everything, but Colby was in here saying that uh, if he does win that, it's actually going to be Trump wrapping the belt around his waist. Uh, so what do you make of that? Um, I don't know. I think the whole scenario is weird. That's what I think. <laughs> That's what I make of it. <laughs> like, I don't get the fascination with, with, with another man. You know, I don't get it. I know, I know he used to be the president and stuff, but he's no longer the president. So I don't get, like, what's going on and... I don't know, it's just a weird, why I picked him, just to be a character off, off, off the back of him, you know, I just don't get it, and Trump and Rupp nothing around his ways, because he ain't getting about, Trump has been to his fights before, when he's lost, so Trump can't fight for him, um, yeah, just need to grow up and go get a girlfriend or something. <laughs> you wouldn't want Rishi Sunak to put the belt around you, no? Who? You wouldn't want Rishi Sunak. <laughs> no. <laughs> Boris Johnson. <laughs> Boris Johnson. <laughs> it's equivalent to that, right? It's like Boris going to put the bat around me. He's like, bro, like, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> Leon down here. Um, second headlining event in Las Vegas. Obviously, the first one was yeah. COVID times. Topping the bill of a massive card. It could be the biggest card of the year. Do you think this is the perfect opportunity for you to kind of catapult yourself a bit more into global superstardom? Um, yeah, for sure. I think um, Las Vegas is the... The place of dreams, right? Like everyone dreamed to um, come here headline. Um, like I said, it's my first time headlining a sold out arena in Las Vegas. It was that like, weird, like seeing myself in lights in Las Vegas, you know, and even though I've been here before, but it was because of COVID. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, I think therefore I can use this opportunity to prepare myself um, even more, you know, and I was a Kamari was, was, was a pinnacle in my career for, for getting the belt, but now it's my time to reign, you know. And, uh, I know you said you in the past you're a big Marvin Hagler fan. Have you walked past Caesar's Palace where he fought Ray Leonard? Uh, I went shopping there actually yesterday. Yeah, um, but yeah, he's, he's a, one of my my icons and someone I greatly look up to. You know, so R. P. Yeah. And uh, ob sorry, and obviously this is Colby's third crack at the welterweight title. How satisfying will it be for you to essentially put the, slam the door in his face in terms of title contention and potentially usher him into retirement? Um, I'm just focusing on me. You know, I'm not really focusing on like, this is Kobe's last shot. Whatever. I know you ain't beating me. That's the main thing. Like, wherever we go down to, to somewhere else and get a title shot, then fair play to him. You know, like, my aim is he's not beating me and that's it. You know, I don't... I don't give to, I don't care what he does with his career after that, and that's it. Cheers, bro. Leon, to your left. What exactly makes uh, Leon Edwards have the most aesthetic physique in the US? <laughs> uh, I think that's the good waist. The, the ratio from the waist to the shoulders to the back to the legs to the dick is like just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all just, <laughs> it's all just perfect. What have you made of all the new fans you've got from that? Because you go on one of your Instagram pages. Yeah, I know. Literally oh. every, every um, post I put up, <laughs> it's funny. All my coaches all, all start ripping, to, like, <laughs> ripping into me about it, but um, it's so funny. Any funny chance games. of a career in bodybuilding after the SE? 
Nah, nah, hang on. <laughs> I'm gonna get fat if anything. And putting yourself as number one, who would you put as number two? Who's got the most thick? Other than your brother. I don't know. I don't, I don't really judge men by bodies like that, so I don't know. <laughs> Leon over here. Obviously, I know you guys have a good relationship, but GSP is backing you uh, this week. And I guess, how is it like hearing that from a legend like him who held that very belt that you have now? Um, it means a lot. It means a lot. You know, he actually texted me the other night and um, gave me give me advice. And just, he's a, he's a great man. You know, he came to the UK before. We went out at dinner and I had a, 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 a long chat, you know. So was, for someone that I consider z to go um, to be not just stingy with information, but like also willing to help and willing to, to give advice to the, the young up and comers that's chasing for his record. That's what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to beat his record, trying to be the best of all time um, and not being stingy with it. I think that shows the, per, the kind of person he is, you know, he's a great man and um, I wish him well in, in his retirement, you know. And uh, with the MMA scene being the biggest it's ever been out in the UK, um, obviously you and Tom now hold belts. Does a win here help your case of potentially taking part in a stadium event out there? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Like I said, having Tom now that um, went and took, <laughs> took him out so quick, uh, I think it only speaks volume to mixed martial arts in, in the UK, you know, and to have two champs at the same time, I think it's a perfect time to get a stadium show done. You know, I feel like it's, it's defo, we've defo earned it over the years and we we'll definitely deserve it, you know. So, um, yeah, 100%. And speaking of stadium events, you played in the Soccer Aid charity match. You played as a goalkeeper, and safe to say, it didn't really go out the way you wanted nope. <laughs> How was that experience like playing in goal? Um, I think the whole experience was just like, sick anyway, you know, just the, for such a good cause. And um, it was that mad scary as well. I was just like charging towards you with the ball. It was, it was different, but um, like I said, something I want to do again next year because it's for a good cause. And um, it was fun. And uh, you're, actually, you're an Aston Villa fan. Um, how happy are you seeing the run they are on right now in the Premier League? Nah, I'm chuffed, you know, because uh, like when I first came to the UK, I, I went straight to, I live in Aston, which is where Aston um, Villa is. And um, so to see how, how well they're doing and um, they were like the underdogs and now they're like reigning, just similar to my story, you know. So um, yeah, I'm happy for them for sure. Would that be where you want to fight at the Villa Park? Yeah, that was, oh, that was, that was sick. If that, that could happen, that would, that would be sick. Um, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Leon, one, oh. Leon, we know that you won the title in an epic comeback fashion. You defended it making a statement. Do you feel like that defense changed the conversation around you as a champion? Um, yeah, for sure. I think it definitely helped, you know. Um, I think everyone was saying it was a fluke before when we knocked him out. So when we went out there and beat him convincingly in, in my hometown, um, I think that proves my case that I, I am as good <laughs> as what you think I am. And um, so, yeah, but I feel like this performance I'm going to put on on Saturday night, I think that's going to be my standout performance, you know, and that's going to open the eyes to, to just conf the confirmation of just how good I am, you know. And was it a breath of fresh air this camp, not having to think about Kamaru Usman after back-to-back -back camps with him on your mind? Um, yeah, 100%. I feel like it. Um, even though I grow, I grew um, in the camps that I've had with, with Kamaru, um, it's good to have like a fresh up new opponent, um, similar stylistically kind of fight, um, but a totally different person that you get to focus on and break it down, and, um, so it's perfect. And it seems almost impossible to get away from all of Colby Covington's comments, so do you take a almost enjoying it and finding the humor in all of the content he's producing? Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Like I said, the guy's a clown and it's easy to, he just, he just says random shit, you know, so it doesn't make sense to, to nothing. He's just talking just to talk and um, so it's easier to, um, it's easier to just deal with it and laugh, and laugh at it, you know. Thank you. Liam, yeah. um, I feel that obviously your grappling has been very underrated through your UFC career, especially your work in the clinch. Is that where you feel that you can be a little bit dominant in this fight and kind of force Colby into a striking match? I'm going to for a mixed martial arts match. I'm not trying to keep it on the feet or on the ground or wherever. I'm, I'm willing to go where the fight goes. You know, I feel like, um, like I said, he's been taken down multiple times in the UFC. He's been choked out in the UFC. He's been hurt in the UFC. So... Why can't I do it? You know, I was the first guy to take Kamaru down. Everyone thought he can't be taken down. So a guy that can definitely be taken down, that's way smaller than me. Um, so once you once feel my size and my strength and my power, I think he's going to feel the difference, you know? Yep. We, 
you said that you wanted to retire Colby ahead of this fight. We've not really seen you get that dark and talk about your opponents like that before. What kind of draw drew out those comments? Um, did I say I want to retire? I didn't think I said that. I think someone asked me, would you retire after the fight? I was like, maybe, you know, because I said I can't, I can't see him fighting the younger guys that's coming up. Because um, he's turned turn them all down already, you know, and sat out for two years just not to fight them. So I can't now see him, him winning the bout. I've been a very active champion and fighting all the younger guys that's trying to come up and, and, and take his bout, you know. So um, so if he does lose his, I think he either walks away or move down to another weight class, you know. Last one for me, out of the two welterweight fights that you, you share on the card, who do you think is uh, standing out as your biggest opponent moving forward? We'll see Saturday night. We'll see Saturday night. Like, who knows? You know, like you might think, say our name today, then Saturday night to get panned out. <laughs> you're like, oh, but you're, what, you're, you're no longer in the running. You know what I mean? So um, let's see Saturday night. You stand out and we'll go from there. Thank you. Leon, one question over here. You've got a lot of big personalities at the press conference tomorrow. Five of the guys on stage all ultimately want to fight you. Mentally, how do you prepare to deal with all that in front of everybody? Um, it's good because my last fight was I was a headline, you know, so I had to like sell the cards. I was in my hometown. There was a lot of pressure on me, you know. So now I can sit back, let let all, let, let, let them all bicker and talk shit and um, go out there and perform Saturday night, you know. So I feel like it'd be um, an easier press conference for me because um, Kobe chatting shit. Uh, who else? Paddy. Paddy talks, um, Ian talks, they all talk, you know, so I can just chill, enjoy my time and bounce. Thank you. Leon down here. Are you looking forward to finally facing off with Colby after all these years of him talking Breeze? Yeah, for sure, 100%. I definitely want to um, just have a look at him and, and let him know that I'm, I'm coming in to take him out, you know, and um, size him up. I know he's way smaller than me, but I still want to see, see him in person. You know, I've seen him before London. Um, but I haven't actually like face off, so it'd be good to see him soon. Cheers, bro.